All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, we're going to start off by giving all praise, love, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the uh, apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutation to all y'all keep pushing this truth and truth and sincerity. And, um, hey, you go ahead and take it over, brother. Yeah. Hey, you know, we were just talking about several different things, man. And uh, one of the main topics that we were talking about is um, how, you know, out here in GMS Chicago, we're about to, you know, go and preach again, you know, once again on the streets. And, um, and we were just talking about how pretty much, you know, you're going to have a lot of these people, they're going to get carnal with us. And the reason why is because, you know, we're going to pretty much tell them that, look, this little party that's, you know, still, you know, going on is about to end, you know, and they're going to get mad about it. Because you know, we're gonna, you know, tell them the truth that look, these um, these stimulus checks, these unemployment checks are eventually gonna run out. All right, you know, the prices of food and your, you know, your utilities, all these things are gonna go up. It's not gonna get any better out here. You're gonna see more, uh, what is that? Police brutality. You're about to see, you know, martial law troops come in, you know, etc. Man, it's just gonna get real ugly out here. And a lot of people don't want to hear that. They still want to, you know, live in, you know, this uh, little fantasy land that they, you know that they're in right now you know this uh, they want to live in the smoke and mirrors if yeah. brothers got precepts anything I you know it. let's just go this is uh amos chapter 5 verse 10 they hate him that rebuketh in the gate mm. and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly because we're speaking uprightly why is it because we're using the scriptures and the spirit of yahweh Shai to reprove the world all right especially to uh, our people but when our people see us coming back out to teach the word they're going to hate it because now it's more of a, a feeling of, yeah, they might actually be right. Yeah. So I don't want to, you know, they, they might be talking about me, you know. They yeah. might be infringing on what I got going on in, this, in my wickedness, man. So they're going to, it's, it's going to get deeper when we go out to teach again, man. It's going to be an I told you so moment. Yep. Exactly. And, then, and then these niggas are so fucking simple. You know, to stop the message, they always think they got to kill the messenger. Yep. Which isn't, you know, and that's what they've been doing for the last hundred. That's what that's what they've all been doing. That's what the two thirds were uh, famous for, man, killing the prophets. Yeah. But the thing is, man, this time it's not going to go down like that. Like, yeah, you know, some prophets are going to be martyrs, but like, no, man, the prophets are going to be are going to make it, man. And the prophets they do kill are going to come right back out. That's it. I mean, come come right back to life, Salakim. Because hey, this, this this shit is wrapped up, man. These people are defeated, man. Hey, they they um they trying. Yeah. It's just also old saying they want to have their cake and eat it too, but it's like, look, man, you can't build your kingdom in Esau's kingdom, man. Can I say this real quick? It, um, they see these people, man. You know, before they were able to laugh at what we were saying, they may even get a, into an argument with us, right? And then afterwards, you know, they could live, you know, their life like nothing ever happened. You see, now though, is we're gonna be telling you, you know, what's gonna come, you know, through the spirit of Pa Yahab Shimal Shah. And you see, these things are at your front door now. All right, it's banging at your front door. You see, these people are—they're scared. They're nervous now. They're—they're they're in basically a panic mode, and they don't know what to do. It's a fight or flight, basically, what's uh, occurring. All right, and you see, a lot of these people—they're just gonna—you know—they're like a that uh, what is it that that uh, mouse backed up in the corner. Or what is a mouse gonna do? You know, when it's backed up, it's gonna eventually just you know claw, scratch, bite. You know. That's it. Got something up with you? Oh, okay. I got one. All right, meet yeah. the brother. This is Isaiah 30 and 10. It says, well, let me make, let me make sure I'm giving the right. Yeah, Isaiah 30, and, I'm going to start at 9. Isaiah 30 and 9, it says that this is a rebellious people, mm. lying children, children that, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Ooh. And that's, that's Jake in the nutshell right now, man. You can't tell these people nothing, you know. They see, they, they don't think this is for their benefit. They think they know it all and got it all right now, you know. It says, which say to the seers, and the seers of the prophets, see not, and, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. So they don't want to hear, they don't want to hear the truth, man. They want to hear that this place is going to go on for 10 years. They want to hear Black Lives Matter is going to get them out of this jam, that they're going to get equal rights. You know, that they're going to get a good paying job, that they're going to be on top of the world. But that, that shit's not true, man. It says, it says, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, yeah. prophesy deceits. And that's the thing. We're not going to lie to you, man. We're telling you, we are actually giving you uh, the good things, the hope. We're giving you the hope in the gospel to let you know that, hey, 
your Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, is coming back, but he's only coming for the elect, man, the one-third. You know, we're letting you know that, hey, we do have a kingdom coming, man, but it's not going to be in this place. It's not going to be in wickedness. And see, they, they don't, see, that's the thing. To them, that, that's a bad thing. They want to hear that, uh, they want to hear that, hey, man, Esau's going to accept us, and he's going to liberate us, and he's going to, they, they want Esau to make them free, man. They still want, like, disorder, man, because that's really what it really comes down to. See, you know, if you're going to follow the Heavenly Father, you have to uh, have a standard. That's right. You have to have a structure. You see, our people, they've been so, um, um, what's the word, I'm broken down, all right, in a base that is, it, it's hard for them to accept any type of order now, all right? And you see, they want to continue in this society because you can still be a homosexual and live out here. You can still be a, a goddamn uh, um, pork eating, you know, shrimp eating, you know, a uh, 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 person, all right? And everything's all good, you know what I mean? Because see, as the scriptures say, um, the Lord gave no um, uh, no man license to sin. But see, Esau, in a sense, he gave people that license to sin. He's allowed people to, you know, indulge in this wickedness. And they don't want to um, pull themselves out of it, man. They want to continue in this, you know? They, all, they still want to be an adulterer. They want to be an idolater. These people love this stuff, man, because it, it's easy to do these things. It's hard to endure, man. It's like, hey, even those uh, entertainers and they, they uh, start catching um, catching that hell when they start to uh, convey some types of truth, whether it be paying homage to Jake and uh, doing that fake ass apology shit, or actually truly understanding that we're Israelite, man. Then when that hell comes, most of them bow out. My guy is cute. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to fizzle away real soon. You got Brandon T. Jackson, you got the fucking Kenji Lamar. You got uh, all, a Kodak bunch. Of, you got plenty of celebrities. You got um, uh, what's what, what's that basketball player? I don't, uh, you got plenty of any entertainers that know, man. They just yeah. about all of them, man. Damn, they're yeah, all of them. They watch us. Hey, boys, see, they don't want to you know lose that fame. They don't want to lose that wealth, you know. And you see, a hey, uh, well, when you come into this truth, well, what do you got to do? You got to forsake everything. And a lot of people they don't want to do that. And really, it's funny because people think that they're really losing out on something, but it's, uh, look, Actually, you're, gaining. Yeah, you're gaining, all right? You're really gaining when you uh, separate yourself from this world. This, this place has really nothing to offer, man. Yeah. Even if you have, like, you know, a little bit of money and you can start a business, guess what, man? You, you're going to still get harassed by the cops. You still got the, the IRS after your ass, okay? You, you, you got, um, you know, you got to deal with an unruly woman. You can have money, bro. As a you know a Jake man, you have a Jake woman, right? It, that shit, not even a Jake woman, any woman, bro, and they'll still give you hell, man. They can still divorce you and ask for half, man. Shit, you don't even have to be technically so called married to these women in this society, but if you live with them, you know, for X amount of years, they, they, I forgot what that law is called, but it's common a yeah. what's it called? It's a common law. A common, common law, law, you know, where they can still take you know uh, money. They can take your kids, man, it, bro. You're hey, as the scriptures say, can you get real quick? Was that Deuteronomy 28 where it says that we're not going to have any uh, ease? I think it's like 66, I think, roughly. 28, 66? 65, maybe? Uh, hey, we're still under curses, man. See, that's the thing with our people. They don't want to accept that we're under curses. And I actually had um, a situation where my dad, when I first got into the truth, we were talking about, you know, several different things. And it was uh, dealing with... Um, Basically, uh, me working, pretty much. You know, I was a young man at the time. I think I was like 22, 23. And he was wondering, like, well, what are you going to do, you know, like with your life, basically. And then, you know, I had a particular opportunity that fell through. It didn't, like, not, it didn't work out. And I just told my dad, I was like, we're under curses. I just was straight flat, you know, um, straightforward with him. He got so mad that he said, fuck that, man. That's not true. Like, he got really fucking mad, like. Like, he, like, literally screamed on the top of his lug down there and said, fuck that, that's not true. Like, cause you know what? Jake wants to believe. It's like, it's, it's like, you especially see it with, like, Southern Kingdom and, like, St. Francis voting, right? You know, Jake wants to believe the lie that they're free, that they're, you know, you had all these Martin Luther Kings and Rosa Parks that did all this shit for you to, quote, unquote, have rights. It's basically, man, Esau just gave you all rights so you can fucking be better slaves and pay more taxes, man. And to be under the curses forever, man. Because yeah. Jake don't want to feel like they're under the curses because guess what? That, that's, oh, damn, I really have to do better for things to get a little bit better for me, man. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Shit, just, just like Jake, another curse that Jake gets that uh, heathens don't get is they get the what? The razor bumps. You shave your face, you get the razor bumps. 
Well, just like every other curse that the Lord is spewing out, man, you know, you're meant to correct, uh, come correct and do better. Otherwise, you're going to reap that curse. And that's what it says in the book of Proverbs, man. It says the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, man. So, you know, of course, you know, while we're here in this captivity, we still go through our little bullshit. But really, that's, that's those are trials the Lord is putting us back through to, to get to the kingdom. But at the same time, uh, any other fucking issue, like, you, yes, in this world, man, you're going to live a more miserable life, man. Coming to the truth, you're not going to live that. I got a uh, precept of you. Um, Can you get that real quick with that Deuteronomy and then hop into a precept you got? Okay. This is uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 65. It says, And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, mm. neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Okay, so but you're not going to find any ease no matter where you're at. You're, gonna, you're not going to have any rest, man. Okay? It is what it is. The Lord, hey, he put this curse on us, and that's because we were disobedient. All right, it doesn't matter how you look and where you're at, man. Hey, things are going to go bad. Keep going. It says, but, the, but Yahweh shall give thee there a trembling heart. And failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. <laughs> yeah, you know you're gonna have a, a sorrow of eyes, man. Because why? Because you're gonna have bad things happen to you all the time. Nothing positive is ever gonna you know occur. That's right. You know, you have a trembling heart, meaning your mind, because you you don't know whether you're coming or going half the time. This is a perfect example we're living in right now, man. How many fucking Israelites are out here getting smoked on a daily by these fucking, uh, not only the police department, but these uh, just Edomites and heathens in general, Shit, man? Shit, their own people. And, yeah, and their own people. That's the thing. I don't, hey, that, that's actually the, um, uh, hey, your, your own biggest enemy is your own your fucking people. brother, man. Mm -hmm. And your own sister, man. You're, you know what I'm saying? You're, 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 you're a na uh, you're nation. Keep going on. God, Deuteronomy 28 and 66. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, yep. and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have no assurance of thy life. Yep, he, like I hey, that made crazy, that statement. Man. You, you don't know whether you're coming or going. Hey, one, hey, one day you you're gonna be up. Hey, the, the next you know day you're gonna be smoked. You'd be like Queen and Slim. Yeah. Exactly, man. And you see it happen all the time with our people, man. Yep. All the time, hey. It, 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 you you have somebody that's you know doing pretty you know well. Hey, they're they're just they, they go into you know a particular place, area. Right, Next thing you know, how you said they're getting smoked by a cop. Hey, they might get shot by their own people. Yep. Fuck it, they, they 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 go to the job. Next thing you know, they're fired or their business gets you know uh, uh something happens with their business where it just completely you know uh, implodes, man, so to speak. And, that, and that's the answer to you Israelites' question in a sense, because Israel always wants to ask. Israel always asks that dumbass question, man. This dude was doing all this great shit. You know, he was helping people doing this. Ultimately, it comes down to one, if you're not really truly serving y'all by Shimei on Shai, you're not doing shit. But Israel always says that, man, like, what, what happened? What ha hey, wrong place, right time. The curses, that's what happened, man. And our people are about to find that out, man. It's like, look, if you're not serving the Lord, hey, you, you, you're gonna, you, at some point, you're gonna get fucking smoked. It's like, hey, the flip side of that scripture is, hey, what, that uh, that Psalm 73? You look at who, who's not in trouble, man. Who's not in trouble like other men. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's who's a, not under the curses right now, man. Yeah, that's a strong sign that that person is going to get a great judgment, man. And that's that's a sign of uh, somebody that you don't want to be like, man. Like, damn, why would she, why we always got to have our shit like this? And then they shit is, is way better than ours because the Lord's about to give them a judgment, man. And so that's, you, you don't want to follow after this man in society. And that's what you niggas is doing. And I think that... um. What is it? I think I believe it's probably say uh envy not their press or choose yeah. none of his ways. Yeah. And that's what Jake does, man. Jake, you you fucking niggas are trying to be like these fucking Edomites, man. You emulate them. And believe it or not, like half you motherfuckers want to be these fucking fake gangsters and shit. That was Esau, man. Doing drive-bys, yeah. fucking fucking people over. Oh, he's the true thug, man. Like he the see he, the thing between what Esau does and Jake does is Jake does it on a small ass level. Bro, you you're talking about gang wars, bro. Esau will sit there and take a whole fucking country. And do some gang shit, bro. And it's called World War. Yep. That's what he. That's some real gangster shit, bro. A real thug. All right. He'll go sit there and, and, and like how the brother said, he's a real thug. He'll go into a, 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 another country, bro, and bomb the shit out of it and snatch the natural resources, bro. Yep. That's the real fucking thug, gangster, and thief of the fucking world, man. And then make your ass want to be like him after he fucked your people over. <laughs> yep. Man, that's fucked <laughs> up. Bro. And then lock you the fuck up for being like him. Right. Then persecute oh, you for man. being 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 just like them, man. 
And this is, but you know what? This is what you motherfuckers want. It's like it's not like we didn't fucking warn you, man. You motherfuckers, are, you opted in for this shit. You chose this shit, man. Because the prophets told you what, what hey, what the outcome was gonna be. And that's the thing, man. Hey, if you, hey, what does the scripture say? Light the that path is set before you. Choose you now this day. What life and death. And that's what the, hey, that's the that's that's what it's gonna come down to with Jake, man. You gonna have to make that choice. It's like, hey, do I want to fucking be redeemed or do I want to be fucking saved? And it, hey, a lot of you all are about to choose death. I got a uh, hey, I'm gonna say something right quick. Uh, shit, in, in the in the ancient world, common knowledge uh, uh, it, it it was to know what what it means to to uh all, all the judgment coming to the people that are living a certain way. Like for example, uh, when you read the book of Job, uh, uh, when Job was going back and forth with his with his friends, they would say, uh, uh, "I'm gonna go back to my fathers." Or they see things. Look, having you not known this since the day of our fathers, and after that, they'll say that uh, a, a wicked man will prosper and all this will be good. But at the end, it will be nothing but destruction. At the end, they'll be taken out of the way. All that that they got, well, they'll not enjoy it. You know, and, and it'll happen like that before you know it. Yeah, you never skate off into the sunset. Mm -hmm. And Esau knows that, man. Hey, you, you read that uh, that Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. This guy, like, it, he, the way it's worded, he knows he's not skating off into the sunset, nope. man. That Revelation at 12 and 10, no, he, he knows if he has but a short time. And that's why all these things are happening right now, man. Because Esau knows his time is running out. He sees the chariots in the sky. We see the chariots. Hey, the men of the Lord are waking up worldwide. And that's why this persecution is coming, man. And he ate. Hey, it's too late to be fucking scared, man. You people, hey, if you if you watching this and you can hear the words, you know, you can hear the Lord's voice, hey, you got to get right, man. But for you motherfuckers who scoff, hey, keep scoffing, man. Hey, you, hey prove prove us wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah, hey, yeah. when these chariots come, I, hey, I want, I want to be one of them. I, I want me and the men around me to, to be like, hey, we want to be those motherfuckers that say, I told you so. Get some blood. Yeah, this is... um. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 6 It says In the morning sow thy seed And in the evening withhold not thine hand But thou knowest not whether it, sh uh, whether it shall prosper Either this or that Or whether they both shall be alike It says truly the light is sweet And a and a pleasant thing It is for the eyes to behold the sun So like with everything in this world The Lord gives a, a Blessing to it man If you put enough labor into it like whether you be working at a carnal job or you know you, you doing this uh this work man you know the lord is gonna bless it man but the way that it's gonna uh, it's gonna stay continuous is if you're in this word man uh this is a uh, verse on um, verse uh, seven it says truly the light is sweet and, and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun but if a man live many years and rejoice in them all yet let him remember the days of darkness for they shall be many all that come with this vanity. So don't get don't don't get a uh, relaxed day school on the sweet things. Like it's never gonna come a bitter man. Shit in in, in, in adversity. Remember, um, I mean, at, uh, yeah, in adversity. Prosperity, remember adversity. Yeah, in yeah, prosperity, remember adversity. And in, in uh, adversity, remember prosperity. They, they, they both come from the Lord, man. Yeah, it's it's gonna be after this. After the great destruction, it's gonna be the kingdom, man. And and right now, all those things are in the so-called peace and safety mode. There's gonna come great destruction, man. That's what you gotta remember. And what, what when you remember destruction, what do you remember? You remember a way out of destruction that, in which we have a way. You remember the Lord, man. It says, by the chair of the Lord, we persuade men. And it says in verse 9, it says, Rejoice, so young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart. So if you wanna just, hey man, if, if you wanna just take what the, the Lord bless you carnally with and just use that as a way to say, oh no, that's not coming. You know, or to put off the, the ways of the Lord and, and, and uh, to do your own thing. Well, guess what? It says, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things, the Most High will bring thee into judgment. So whether you did something, you've been doing bullshit, you know, or you've been bullshitting this whole time, you know, and you've just been chilling in America, or, you know, you've been dealing with the Lord, or you've been trying to, to, to convert to this truth, man, meaning, you know, basically to repent. And to come back to uh, to your first love, you're gonna be judged for both of those things, man. But you better hope that you get judged for the latter, because then you be uh, counted as the man of the Lord, man. Uh, in verse 10 it says, Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth they are vanity. And, and it says that when I was a child, I spake as a child, but when I became a man, I put such childish things behind. Meaning in this truth, you become a man, man. 
You're reverting from a we as of now we're becoming men, and then we're gonna be in God mode when the Lord gets back. That's right, because what most of these most of the men in this world are in a, a boy state of mind. Yep. Okay, so they don't have, and it's Augusta. We came out of the world, so we had to came out, we had to come out of that that type of mindset. But what the truth teaches you how to be a real man. That's what these a lot of these men out here don't want to be. That's right. why they come against the scriptures. That's why the spirit is contrary to what we're teaching. Because they're of this world, and this world teaches you. This world doesn't teach you how to be a man. It doesn't teach you nothing but degeneracy, man. Mm -hmm. You know. So that's why when we're gonna go out on the highways and byways and teach again, it's nothing gonna be. It's, it's gonna be nothing but degenerates that come against us, man. Okay. Yeah. You know. You gotta understand that too. You know. Like Black Lives yeah. Matter right now. That's that's that, that's the prime example where it's like. <laughs> That's really that's really just another battle against the Israelite men. You know what I mean? Because they, they're saying uh, they say Black Lives Matter, but then they push Black trans lives, gay lives. Right. Yep. The Black is really, and then they push the, the they big up the woman. Basically, everything the Lord that don't matter to the Lord it matters to them, man. Yep. You know, because it, 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 that's why we're not a part of that BLM um, thing because it's utterly against the Lord, man. We, tra to us, trans lives don't matter. To us, a terror just because it, 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 he or she has a, a black mom, so called, or or, or that. Doesn't make them a part of us, man. It's about if they are truly an Israelite, no matter how the fuck they look, they 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 follow this truth until the end, man. That's what matters. I got I got one. This is Luke 12 and 16. It says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Which is, you know, the spirit, you know, that the brothers are, are going into. Well, a lot of these people are, are what? Are too uh, are comfortable because of what they have, you yeah. know? But yeah, little they, do they know that that shit could be taken away like that. They got their goods and invested in America. They think that this is a safe place to store your, your, your mind, man. To, okay, everything's cool. No, that's the kingdom, man. Right here, we ain't meant to have rest. Because uh, you know, the Judah being a head tribe, Judah's getting that affliction right now, right? And the thing is with Judah, it's like it's two types of fucking Judites, right? And I'm just saying like this: it's real niggas and it's fucking coons. So you have a lot of you have a lot of men who are like uh, who who look at it as like okay, you know, they're starting to actually wake up and say like, hey, you know what? We are fucking being oppressed on this side. And they, you know, they they see it. But then you have the ones who are like. As long as it's not me, as long as it's not my kid that gets shot, you know, or my kid that fucking gets raped, you know what I mean? A lot of people are fucking uh, are coons right now. You know, they still want to, they want to, they they want to be in subjection, man. They can't even, they can't even imagine ruling. Because right. it goes back to what we we're saying, because they don't have a standard. Well, that's that's what it comes down to. Look, look, our people talk about it. they want this, they want that. If it was given to them, they wouldn't even know what to do with it, man. Right. They wouldn't even know how to handle it. Yeah. And you see the Lord, he's setting up men right now to to build up a nation again through the Spirit. You know what I'm saying? These people, they don't have any guidance. They don't have any guidelines. They don't have any standard. They don't, they don't have anything, man. That's why it's all going to come to naught, man. It's, if it, it, that's why the book of Acts said, you know, if this be of the Most High, you know, it's going to prosper, basically. But if it be of men, it's going to come to naught, man. Yeah. You know? God, uh, this is back on Luke 12, now verse 20. So this is the the Lord's response to those who, you know, who have that uh, comfortable mindset in this place or that trust in the riches. Verse 20, it says, But Yahweh said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? You know? Hey, the, uh, uh, those things are not going to save you. It says, what, the, the uh, riches shall not profit in the day of wrath? You know? Mm -hmm. It says... Uh, Verse 21, this is the point. So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward Yahweh by Shemi Yahweh Shai. You know? And that's that man, main, that main treasure is that faith, man. Because when all this shit goes, if you don't have that fucking faith in Yahweh by Shemi Yahweh Shai, you are fucked. Man. Because you can't eat the fucking Jordans. You can't eat the fucking money. You're going to have truth. Just, just getting, just leaving your house trying to go three blocks is going to be like a, a mission out of one of these post apocalyptic movies, man. And if the spirit was in it, it isn't with you, you're fucked. You got something, Ramaki? Did you have something? No, no. But hey, can you get that real quick in our Proverbs? I think it's like 12 and 6, maybe try 12 and 16. It says that um, that knowledge 
is basically how the um, the just is going to get delivered, man. Okay, that's what's going to get us out of here. See, our people, they really think that money and carnal, you know, means are going to like somehow, you know, save them from everything that's coming. How are you going to uh, maybe try eleven? Maybe eleven and sixteen. Eleven and six. Put a uh, um, put just and put deliverance. Oh. I think that should come up. It's in Proverbs though, for sure. It's either in the eleventh or twelfth chapter. I could be wrong with the uh, with the verse though. Just deliver. Okay, deliver Where's that? Do you see it? Yeah, right there. Eleven and nine. Uh, this is Proverbs eleven and nine. It says, "An hypocrite with his mouth destroyed his neighbor." But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. You see, the, through knowledge, the just is going to be delivered. See, the brother brought out that riches aren't going to profit in the day of the Lord, man. All right? Carnal things aren't going to get you saved. See the, see, the thing is, the Lord is looking for the righteous sacrifices, all right? The Lord is looking for righteous sacrifices. And you see, these people, they're, they're like, uh, um, they're coming in that spirit of, you know, uh, Cain, man. Giving up uh, uh, and offering these wicked sacrifices. They don't want to do good, nor do they even want to hear it, man. Like, how to do good. Hey, these people reject knowledge, man. What is that, Hosea 4 and 6, man? You know? Hang you got quick. some? This is Proverbs 11 and 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. That's, that's right. That's all that matters to these motherfuckers. Because in this world, it, it just matters what, what you got and who you are and what your status is, man. That's all these motherfuckers care about. But those aren't the things that's gonna get you saved. They're redeemed, man. Yeah. You know, cause hey, it says, uh, "What the rich men have done wrong," and that, that's that's this whole. Hey, Esau blesses, blesses the covetous, man. That's what this whole world is about: is fucking rape, robbery, and murder, man. It's not about justice. In this society, righteousness doesn't flourish, man, because it's ruled by a wicked man. He's killing all the wrong people, man. <laughs> and that goes into <laughs> Isaiah. Was that the, the, uh, the five and twenty? One with him that call uh, uh, evil good and good evil. Yep. See, if you do evil things in this society, you get rewarded. If you do uh, righteous things, you get uh, <coughs> some type of backlash. You know, you know, you you get uh, some type of negative repercussion in this place, man. And that's the reason why the Lord is gonna come back to, to remedy that, and He's gonna do a lot of killing because it's a lot of people that are living on this earth right now that are not supposed to fucking be here. You know, and when I say uh, what I mean about that is that what are they doing? You have a bunch of trannies and homosexuals running around, and that's not even half of uh, of, of the wickedness and of the cake. But that's that's a great ordeal. You, you know, you got, you got you got murderers, you have thieves. whores, you have thieves, Adulterers. You, have, you have witches. Yeah, you have all these people that the Lord don't want here because it's create and it's created a great imbalance in the earth, man. It's actually killing the earth, man. It's taking the potency from the earth. Yeah. So the Lord's gonna come back and he's not he said he's not gonna let the earth be destroyed, man. Ever. And see, and see, and not even by you people, man. And they're mad that that, that uh we, we we're gonna tell them you know this good news, man. That's why they're gonna try to kill us. So can you get that scripture you bring out in John where it talks about how they um they think that since they're they kill us that they're service. doing a good deed? Yep. These people are, are gonna get it, things are gonna get so crazy out here that they're gonna blame us. They're gonna, you know, you know, because you know some of us are gonna get rounded up and be martyrs, you know. They're going to round us up, you know, uh, get us executed, and they're going to actually think they're doing a good deed, man. Yeah. Right. Look, well, if I may get to this real quick, because that's exactly what they were doing to the prophets back in the day, like in the time of Acts, Acts 17 and 6. I'm just going to get to the point. It says, And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. That's what they're going to look at us. Oh, these guys are the ones that did this. They, they're the ones who talked about us. They're just going to be so bugged out, like the brother said. They're actually going to think, because we're talking about it, is the reason why everything's going on. How simple these <laughs> niggas are, man. Me, the meanwhile, we were trying to free you from oppression. You know, it's like that movie, uh, like Geronimo. You know, you had, the, you had those, um, those same Gadites who were going hard, because Esau had to use Gad to pretty much conquer Gad and Judah as well. Which we still do today. Yep. But they were going hard to get Geronimo, and then they ended up on the same train. I think they were going to Florida. They ended up on that same train going into captivity, looking at each other like, you stupid, you dumbass nigga. I was doing this whole this whole time. And that's how these that's how that's gonna be the look on these people's faces, man. Yeah. 
This is all I got. Our people are a bunch of coons, man. Just straight up, gotta say it. Yeah. Bunch of coons, man. If you're not in this truth, you're a goddamn coon, man, and a sell on the loser. Uh -huh. This John 16 and 2, it says, They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. All right. Yeah. Same thing um, in uh, the Ezra's, man. Hey, the Lord's gonna, uh, I think it's 2nd Ezra's 1, the Lord say he's gonna require that blood that passed, man, from righteous Abel, man. That same blood all the way back from then is going to be required of this required of this generation, man. And that's why there's so many people, um, wicked people on this earth right now, because your brother uh, brought that out. And it says, um, basically, the wicked are reserved for the day of judgment, yes, roughly paraphrasing it. Because they, all that blood is required. See, you people are going to have to have your, your blood shed, all right, in order to, to cleanse the whole earth, man. Because so, uh, so much righteous blood has been spilled, man. And now everything is defiled. Everything's all messed up. And so, uh, you know, the, the, brother in, um, the brother in South Carolina, he said if you wring the earth out, it'll just drip all the blood that Esau, <laughs> Esau accumulated on the earth. If you just wring the, yeah. the earth out, like, it'll just fill up a whole, you know, like, uh, <laughs> universal pot, like, of blood, man. You know? That's, that's how much blood has been shed on this land, man. You know? Innocent, you know, righteous blood, blood of the Israelites, you know. Yep. So now we're coming into that time of the judgment for it, the end of this reality. These people don't want this. The people don't want this reality to end, but it's gonna end, okay? Because it's what there's judgment that has to take place. Yep. And that's the judgment of the Lord, and that's what the prophets are gonna go out onto the highways and byways and teach his plans, his orchestrations, what he has. Uh, 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 Set down for all these people around the world for all their wickedness, man. And they're not gonna like it, of course. <laughs> they all they never liked it. All the times the prophets went out, they never liked the the truth, you know. Yeah, because as um, as the scriptures say, man, what is that? And I think it's Samuel's, and they said, uh, uh, you know, um, who came into that town where they said, uh, are you coming peaceably? Nathan. Yep. You know. Coming down peaceably. Yep. yep. You know, and, and see these these people know like. Deep down in their soul, they know what we're saying is, like, is the truth. Deep down in that, that inner core in them, man, they know, like, oh, no, these men. Look how you said. You made that point, like, prove us that we're wrong. They cannot do it. Mm -hmm. And you see, as we get closer to the end, all the things that we've been speaking for years upon years upon years, it's coming to pass, man. And so then going back to what I was saying earlier, man, these people are panicking now. They're like, shit, maybe what he said was true. Yep. And, and then the only way they, they they know how to react is by doing what? Lashing out. Yeah. You know? I got a scripture. This is second Peter chapter two. Uh verse eight, it says, For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day and their unlawful deeds, like the brother was talking about, man. Well, hey man, this video and us going out there and being in their face on the highways and the byways, bringing out the spirit. We're bringing out the vexation of the Lord. We're complaining about something the Lord's going to come and correct, man. And he's going to make it better. And, and these people, they're going to have a problem with it. And it says, the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. So no matter what you do to us, there's going to be a remnant that's going to be saved. And your ass is still going to fucking die, man. Perfectly. Yeah, you see, these, these people are afraid of Esau, man. They really should be afraid of the Creator, man. They should be afraid of Yahweh Shimei Shai. Because, hey, the, the shit that Yahweh Shimei Shai is, this is all really altered by Yahweh Shimei Shai. Yeah. But the shit that he's really going to do for, hey, for touching his elect, hey, putting the prophets to death, grieving the uh, grieving the uh, the 144 and the one third, shit, that's going to be worse than anything Esau could fucking do to you, man. Yeah, it's, it's a classic line, man, uh, in movies where, oh, man. I can't, I can't tell you that. If I tell you, this such and such will kill me. You need to be afraid of what I'm going to do to you. Well, that's the Lord, man. Like, all this whole time, y'all are afraid that Esau going to fuck you up. You're looking at the wrong person, man. You need to be afraid how the Lord is going to fuck you up, man. Yeah. They're going to find out when it's too late. Because, hey, if, if, if they uh, knew, the, you know, the power and the, t you know, and the, um, the terribleness of the Lord, they would have got right right now. Oh, shit, I got, I got but hey, they, the Lord blinded him. He didn't want him. That's you know? what I said. They should be willing in the day of his power. Yep. 
you know, as soon as the Most High shows his, his, you know, his true power and that he's real and what he's capable of, what, man. Well, you see that first chariot in the sky, right. and this is this is before the chariot even does anything. Just seeing the chariot, knowing it's there, like nah, nah, like it's act, not like this isn't a, this is not a drill. Then you see that like the <laughs> next three pop drill. up. Then right. you see some shit explode. God forbid, God forbid, when some shit starts blowing Other up, people man. People are gonna just give up the damn ghost. Because that Luke, Luke twenty first chapter says so man's heart failing him Perfect. for the things that are coming upon the earth. Yep. You got some marker. Yeah, this is the uh, first uh, Corinthians chapter two verse seven. It says, "But we speak wisdom of the Most High and a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which the Most High ordained before the world unto our glory." All right. It says, "Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it." They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And who is the Lord of glory? Yahweh Shai. Why did you crucify him in the prophets? It's because you didn't believe, man. You didn't believe. Ultimately, you weren't set up to believe, man. Lord, and the Lord has a lot of blood uh, that he's going to sprinkle on his garments, especially with you Israelites, from coming out of Egypt like you did, man. The ones that came out of Egypt and had already back bit, you wrote your judgment was written from back then and just it's it's now it's fulfilled until now from all the deeds you did just like esau's shit is it from uh from the garden from the righteous blood of abel until now it's all about to be on him and y'all about to join hand in hand with him in that judgment the only judgment you're not gonna get uh with esau is in the kingdom man yeah but they still gonna have that uh that everlasting shame. shame yeah because they were supposed to have that, that that shame on this side man you come in the truth what do you feel you feel shame man you think about all the shit you did, and then shit. And when you fuck up for the truth, still you still ask for mercy, man. That it's a great shame when you come in this truth, but you know, hey, you had to you had to fall, you know, in, in order to know what what the uh, what the light was and then what understanding was, man. You got to know uh, the, what you were doing with abominable acts and how to correct that so you should lead others so that we won't get in this this situation again. You know, that's what your house shot came and did and died for, and that's what we're gonna we're gonna do in this truth until we get up out of here. Mm -hmm. You want some remark here? Uh, this is uh, 2 Ezra 16 and 64. This is for these people, man. Therefore hath the Lord exactly searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. Oh. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men. When we go out there and teach, man, these people are ashamed of themselves, man. You know, they don't really want to <laughs> tell you that they're ashamed, so they, they react in an emotional uh, uh, emotional way. What is that? By lashing out, by carnality. But that's okay, because the Lord's going to bring all your sins to you, man. We're not going to have nothing to do with that. We're just telling you the judgment. We're telling you the orchestration, and that's it. Second Ezra 16 and 64. Therefore hath the Lord exactly searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men, and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. So we don't have nothing to do with that the, the, the judgment that the Lord has planned for you people, man. We're here to tell a message, and that's it. When you had in the ancient you had in the ancient world, you had messengers that went from the king to kings. They went from that king to that king, and they were just relaying a message. You people are destroying the messenger, man, because you don't want to take accountability for your actions, your sins. But it's gonna be your accusers in that day. So that's why we're, we're out there to, to really do that. what the prophets of old they did the same thing and what the people's sins came to the forefront and they they cast uh the prophets into into prison they tortured the prophets i think there was a um in the kings they said there was a prophet that um uh there was a king that went to go get the prophet but he didn't want to go get that prophet because it would the, that prophet would always just tell the blatant truth yeah, and he didn't like have, that yep was yep and that's what we're doing. We're going to tell you people the blatant truth. That's it. What, are we, what the fuck? We're living in a reality where we're going to tell you the truth, man. Either we, way, you're going to put us to death. Exactly. Like, <laughs> it's either way, it's like, Why look, not? if we tell you the truth, you're going to put us to death. If we tell you a lie, you're going to put us to death. Because you motherfuckers are wicked, man. That's, the, that's it. That's it. It's like, look, man. Like, look, if you really, if you all, you're going to find out what lies lead you to. It leads you to fucking death. That's it. Hey, not serving the Lord leads you to death. That's why we had the whole king, we had the whole world at one point. Look at look at where we are now. Wouldn't even know it. <laughs> oh man. I got one. Go ahead. This uh this Luke 13 and uh 
25, it says, well, once the master of the house has risen up and have shut to the door and you begin to stand without and to knock at that door saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, he shall answer you and say unto you, I know not whence ye are. And that's going to happen, man, because the Lord's going to take everything away from these people, man. He's going to take the stay of bread. He's going to take your financial stability. He's going to take your, uh, your, your false sense of comfort out here. It says, then you should begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence and thou hast taught in our streets. So, yeah, the messages are out there, man. The prophets, the seers were out there giving you that warning day in and day out, week in and week out, cold, hot, every fucking season. And hey, it's gonna that's gonna be a witness, man. Hey, because if you don't if you don't want to repent and get right now while the doors of mercy are still open, once they close, that's it, man. See? Hey, Noah's Ark is real. That shit, that ark is all over there sitting in Turkey right now at the top of a mountain, man. Go look, go look it up, man. That that really happened, man. It was more souls, uh it was it was socket. It was uh eight souls created, it's eight souls saved. Everything else perished, man. It was more animals that were saved than people. Yeah. Right. Hey, that's the God you're dealing with, man. He, he is, uh, what is it, Micah 3, where it says, uh, uh, the Lord changed not, therefore, Jacob, you, you are not consumed. Yeah, Micah 3. You know, so, hey, the Lord is still the same way. You know? He was dead piercing. He only did that, one, as a sign, and two, just to, you know, that the Lord can bring a, a nation out of a small number, man. He brought all the nations back through that small number, you know? Can you hey, get a machine? Oh, I was gonna say, uh, you guys got anything else or not? Can you get Revelation 22, I think, and 12? Because, uh, hey, because you, uh, that scripture you brought out, Ramaki, with that second Ezra, it's like pretty much, you know, look, all your deeds are gonna come to the forefront. You're gonna have to um, answer to those deeds, man. I think it's 22 and 12. Where's yeah. it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is. You bring that out. What you got out? Ecclesiastes chapter 12, uh, verse 14. So what? This is deep. It says, uh, verse 13, it says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High, keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Ooh! So all, hey, all judgment is going to come to light, man. And, and you're going to get judged on that. Can you get that Revelation 22 now? Because look, you're either going to get a, a righteous reward or a wicked reward for all the deeds that you've uh, done in this life and also your past life. Everything's coming to the forefront now. And this, that's why they call it the uh, Judgment Day. They call it, it's not, uh, they call that for a reason, okay? This is uh, Revelations 22. And <laughs> Revelations 22 and 12, it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as he, as his work shall be. Yep. So whatever your works are, man, what, what, what's your sacrifice? That's the thing. You know, you really got to think about what is your sacrifice? Is it righteous or is it wicked? You know? And that's something no, hey, we're hoping for is a uh, you know a good righteous sacrifice. You see, these people they don't care about what they're putting up to the altar, man. Hey, they're they're putting swine's flesh. They're putting you know shrimp. They're putting uh what else, man? What's abominable, man? Wearing the strange clothing. Man. Wearing you know uh, strange apparel. Yeah, they're they're doing all the abominable stuff. You know that's what that's their works, and then that's what they're you know giving to the altar, man. Yeah, but that's cool. This it's a balanced scale. You know, and, and, and Yahweh's house is a, is is a balance. Well, in Yahweh's hand is a balanced skill, man. And a balance has to be for those who's gonna be saved to weigh out with those uh, with they sin who's gonna be destroyed, man. These people is gonna take take care. Of, well, ultimately, the Lord's taking our sin. He's gonna throw it on their heads. <laughs> These people that's in the world, man. These people that's, that's meant to to be that that great sacrifice of rams and and and. Uh, and uh, and goats, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, you can finish it off with this one. This is uh, First Peter four and eight. It says, "And above all things, have fervent charity amongst yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins." Yeah, charity goes into you know, you know, brotherly love. Hey, the services, man. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is the greatest service known to mankind, man. All right.
telling our people, you know, to give right and to repent and showing them the right way. They, we're showing them what, what's holy and what's profane, mm. what the Lord, you know, loves and what he hates. Right. Hey, it you says know? a cover a multitude of sins. Sin is what? Sin is transgression of the law. And, and, and transgression of, of the law is what? Death. You know? So it means that, you, the, 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 that charity, the, those alms, are going to deliver you. You know, your works. Okay. Charity covered a multitude of sins. You know? So what? Our charity is doing this work, man. Showing the Lord that we don't want to be destroyed and obliterated with these people, man. Ultimately. Hey, well, it says uh, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, yeah. love is the fulfilling of the law, man. Yeah. You're showing somebody how to love the Lord, how to love yeah. you, Ooh, and, and okay. you're showing them how to love themselves and each other, man. Yep. That's what this is about. This is this really is about true love, man. You know, doing right. You don't you don't uh, wish no harm to nobody because you don't want no harm done to you. You don't, you don't go out and, uh, and and mess with other men's women. You don't want nobody messing with none of your women, man. That's righteous, man. You want honor, you give it in the name of the Lord. Take us out, big guy. Hey, so with that, you know, hopefully your brain were edified. We're going to end it by giving all praises and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakaq, Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Yeshua, their rule well. And salutations to you, Achim, out in the highways and the byways, preaching this word in truth and in sincerity. Shalom. Shalom. Ba'ababa. Ba'ababa.